Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Memento. This film came out in the year 2000. It was written and directed by Christopher Nolan, but it's actually based on a short story that his brother, Jonathan Nolan, wrote. I'm pretty sure I have voiced my opinion on Christopher Nolan quite a few times on this channel, and not all of what I have to say is positive. I will give him this. He really knows how to make a film. I think he's one of the few mainstream auteur directors, so you know, he has a very distinct visual style and, and a tone that he captures. There's a certain level of craftsmanship that goes into his films, especially in terms of how the film is constructed. And that's always been my problem. The majority of his films really lack pathos and they lack a sense of emotional payoff from the character arcs and also in just the, the plot arcs as well. And that's fine, that's his style, but for me personally I've seen filmmakers that also have very kind of calculated, a kind of distant sort of approaches to the way they handle movie making and they handle overarching themes and such to me in a more compelling way. Nolan's films are like machines, it's like opening the hood of a car and looking at the inner workings or it's like looking at a blueprint of a building, that's always how I've described his films in the past. It's just that all of the exposition and the subtextual meaning is just, it's so on the surface. The dialogue is always cramming all of the exposition into it in ways that just feel so clunky and you know, a lot of the dialogue is very meandering. Of all of the Nolan films I've seen, Memento is my favorite. I think it works because it's a more focused film. I think in his case, a less is more approach is actually serving him well. And this movie represents everything that he's about. It is quintessential Nolan in a very kind of stripped down sort of context, but he's basically using the blueprints of your typical kind of film noir story with all of the recognizable archetypes and the twists, and he's basically turning them upside down. And by doing so he manipulates the audience in such a way that we start to hold a mirror up to ourselves and realize a lot about our own motivations. And I, I always think that that's important in a film, that's when you really achieve something. How we go to certain lengths just so we can feel like we've got meaning, like we have purpose in our lives. How we lie to each other to make and ourselves, to make ourselves feel better because it's easier and it's fun. I don't think that this is a great film personally. Uh, for me it certainly has its flaws, but it kind of proves that whether you like Nolan or not, you have to recognize that he has he almost has like the mind of a mathematician. It's like he's looking at film as though it, it you know it's an equation. He fundamentally understands film and the manipulative devices that you can use to your advantage and to the point where he can deconstruct it right before our very eyes and we still fall for it every step of the way. That is a talent. But how do I explain what this film is about? That That is a tough one. If you look at this film in certain ways it is very conventional and in other ways it is not at all. It's kind of conventional in the sense that it is a revenge tale that is told kind of through the film noir filter. It's about a guy named Leonard, played by the wonderful Guy Pierce who is trying to track down a man who presumably raped and murdered his wife. Because it's not a Nolan movie without a dead wife. But the predicament that Leonard finds himself in is that he has this specific type of amnesia, a short-term memory loss, where he only remembers bits and pieces of things at a time. He can't form new memories. He can meet somebody at a bar and have a discussion with them, and an hour later he doesn't even know who that person is. So he has to leave a trail of breadcrumbs for himself. So he'll take pictures of people and label them. He will write notes to himself. He tattoos clues and things on his body. Any sort of clues or crucial pieces of evidence or information that he finds he tattoos so that it might lead him to the killer. But on top of that, the movie is told backwards. It's told in little increments in a time that sort of inch their way back to the very beginning. As audience members we are just as disoriented as Leonard is. Watching this film is, is like trying to solve a puzzle and if you see the film maybe once or twice and you're trying to break it apart I do think it's important to see it a second time just to be able to be sure that you really understand it all. Um, but it, it's a lot of fun to try to piece together. But I honestly think that at the same time Nolan relies maybe a little bit too heavily on the mechanics to make up for the lack of profundity beneath it all. But it really is riveting and it pulls you in in a way that, that you're not used to, you know, in the sense that we are so disoriented and trying to work out the logistics in our head because again it's a lot harder when you have to work through things backwards uh, to the point that where the when the plot tw twists and the, the big reveals happen we are completely taken off guard by it because we're so busy trying to work through things. I think that if this movie were told chronologically, had a linear narrative, it wouldn't be that interesting of a movie, but I differ with a lot of the detractors who say that the movie is 
unsophisticated. They dismiss it as being unsophisticated. And the use of backward storytelling, they say, is just a gimmick. I can see where they're coming from. Certainly you can make a compelling argument for the film relying too heavily on said gimmick, but I tend to see the gimmick more as kind of crucial to the overarching themes of the film. Yes, it's a very manipulative film, but all movies are manipulative, and in this case I think the manipulation really does serve a purpose. As viewers, we're experiencing Leonard's point of view, but Leonard is a very unreliable narrator, but because he's the protagonist and really is representing us, we are having to trust him even though we don't know what's really true and what's not. So we're trying to solve the puzzle based on what Leonard says and what Leonard has written in his notes. We don't know what's been distorted by his memories or what he's chosen to distort. As humans that's very natural for us because we naturally tend to gravitate more towards feeling and towards memory rather than truth. But both of them do distort the truth. So perhaps Leonard is writing things down, not because they're true, but because he wants them to be true. Because he wants to constantly have somebody to pursue, to give his life meaning. So he lies to himself. We all do that. We find ways of occupying our time. And I feel like the short-term memory condition is definitely a metaphor for that kind of existential crisis that we all go through. Like the older that we get, the more that memories become uh, distorted the more that they start to fade away like a Polaroid in reverse. I love that and I love how they use the big reveal at the end in order to let the reality of human nature sort of sink in for us. It's a great setup and, and a great payoff in the classical sense because we feel more like Leonard than we think we do and that can be kind of a hard thing to accept. And I also kind of like the, the, the subplot that's going on chronologically as the film is going backwards because it helps to kind of create that binding to create a core structure so we're not too off the rails. It's the subplot of, of Sammy Jenkins who has a similar short-term memory loss and that helps us understand Leonard's predicaments, but more from a, an objective point of view at first. It helps bridge the film together. But we later learn that, that Sammy Jenkins is not who Leonard thinks he is and many of the characters that we see in the film are not who we think they are. And while that may be viewed as a strength, I also think that can also be viewed as a weakness because a lot of the supporting characters, while I see potential in them, they they, you know, they're, they're having to work with, with Nolan dialogue, which is not that easy. That being said, I do think that this is one of Nolan's better scripts, but yet it's still very, very expository, and many of the themes are just so on the surface. The characters basically tell us everything that we're supposed to get out of the film without relying on the audience's intelligence for us to kind of figure it out ourselves. He's spelling out everything when it could have con been conveyed in, in symbols, through character traits, mannerisms, through imagery. It's interesting because Nolan is actually very tame here in terms of his imagery. That might have been for financial reasons or, or whatever, but it's just kind of interesting because he's usually so visually distinct and here everything is is very straightforward and it left something to be desired for me. He really had an opportunity I think to fill the frame in a more dense way that really enriches the film and gave it more layers but he, he didn't do that and I think Part of that is because he wanted the film to feel very immediate, like we really are in the head of Leonard. But at a certain point, I feel like that becomes kind of one note, especially after repeated viewings. Because while he's trying to keep us in the moment and the mind of Leonard as much as possible, it has little to say about how complex that human mind really is. But I will say he does build the tension in, in kind of very subtle but uh, clever ways. Uh, he'll use flashes of imagery from Leonard's past in order to kind of just here and there give us like little subliminal messages about what's going on. But yeah, overall, while I don't think that this is a masterpiece, like I said, I, I'm glad that it was made. Overall, I think it's a, a really entertaining movie that you should see a couple of times at least. I see this movie as really appealing to maybe high school students or maybe hipster college students that really just enjoy uh, problem solving and dissecting the film and discussing it from a mechanical point of view. And they'll have a great time doing it. I mean, I loved this movie when I was in high school and in early college, but as I got older I found less and less to really sink my teeth into from a cerebral point of view and definitely from an emotional point of view. But, you know, as I've, I've said many times, that's not the type of filmmaker that, that Nolan is. So there will always be that barrier for me, but at the same time I do admire him in certain lights. And that is my review. Thank you all for listening. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below. You can also like my Facebook page and link below that. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.